Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, I'm Lori DeYoung, the Healing Homesteader. And today I'm going to talk a little bit with you about the importance of a good night's sleep and some things that you can do to help you have a good night's sleep each and every night. Um, more and more people are finding that the demands of everyday life, the challenges of interpersonal relationships, financial crises, healthcare issues are really making it hard to shut your brain off at nighttime so that you can have a good night's sleep. And when, before I did this video, I was doing a little research and I found a study by the Center of Disease Control that was done in 2013. And it said that more than 9 million people a year rely on prescription sleep aids in order to help them rest each night. Now, this is not a video saying you should or should not take prescription medications. There are pros and cons to when you do take it or when you don't take it. For instance, you know, one of the side effects that a lot of my clients used to report to me was that when they took prescription sleep aids, they often found themselves groggy and kind of in a foggy state the next morning for a while. But in turn, if you don't get a good night's sleep, you also um, may find yourself, you know, having a hard time focusing, especially when you're driving or trying to pay attention to the minute details of your job, especially if it's an early morning job. So I'm not here to say you should or should not take prescription medications to help you sleep. The bottom line is we need to have restful, uninterrupted sleep each and every night. Because if you are, excuse me, dealing with a lot of daily stressors that many people find themselves uh, facing each and every day, going to sleep with a lot on your mind is very, very difficult. So, you know, I'm going to talk to you a little bit of some, uh, some how-tos you might be able to implement in your life. You might find that some are more helpful, some are not. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to make a organic lavender um, pillow spray because I have found myself personally, I'm middle-aged, I have a lot of disrupted sleep, I rely on things like uh, meditation videos, pillow sprays, all these things that I am going to talk to you today are things that I have either used in my own life or and or offered as options to the clients that I have worked with. I've been a mental health therapist for over 25 years. I've had a lot of people that come to me for a variety of, of challenges in their daily life. And one of them is around disrupted sleep. So a couple things that you can do to help maximize the likelihood that you can get a good night's sleep. And the first one is limit your caffeine. However, that's not just um, not drinking coffee. There are a lot of things that even decaf coffee have a little bit of co uh, caffeine in it. Um, certain things like, you know, protein bars or, you know, certain kinds of ice cream, you know, might have a little bit of caffeine. So if you are a caffeine uh, lover like I am, just be careful about how late in the day that you uh, drink it or ingest it in whatever form that that caffeine is coming in. And, you know, figure out what is right for you. It could be that you need to stop at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It could be that you need to stop at 6, depending on when you go to bed. Bottom line is, just be cognizant that it's not just full caffeinated coffee that has caffeine. Another thing that you could do is what I always told my clients is you've got to have good sleep hygiene. And just like before we get up and go out into the world each and every day, we have a routine. We might get up, take a shower, wash our hair, put on our makeup, you know, exercise, do the dishes. We have a lot of things that we do because we're routine oriented uh, beings. The same goes for at nighttime. You've got to create that kind of routine that signals to your body that it's time to slow down. It's time to start kicking into the relaxation mode. And some of those things that you can do is, you know, um, you can put on uh, non-lyrical music. I love 
uh, classical music, music that just has no words to it. Just, just I want a backdrop. I don't want to focus on the, the music. I want the music to be the backdrop to my calming environment. Um, I love certain scents. I like cinnamon candles, pumpkin candles, you know, things that create like an aura of warmth for me. You know, you got to decide. Sometimes in the spring, I like lilac candles or, you know, in the fall, I like pumpkin candles. Whatever your thing is, if you've got Scentsy, if you've got uh, some kind of a diffuser, you know, turn that on towards the, the, the time that you're going to start winding down. Another thing that you can do is, you know, if you are, you like hot baths, um, warm showers, you know, something that's going to signal to your body that it's really time to settle. If you like to read, get a calming book, I wouldn't be watching any TV that's really uh, going to ramp you up like, you know, murder mysteries or, you know, things that's high energy. The goal is with having a good sleep hygiene routine and developing that kind of mellow phase that's going to help you get your body ready to put itself to sleep at night. You don't want things that are going to ramp you up. And in turn, you know, exercise is really, really good for each of us in order to, it helps us sleep better, but you got to really time it. You don't want to be going out in your reflective vest to run three miles and then come home and think that your body's just going to automatically calm itself down. No, do your heavy duty exercising earlier in the day. And maybe if you need to do maybe some stretching, some meditation, some yoga, that's going to calm your body, relax your body and get you into that state of preparedness for sleep. Another thing that you've got to be careful doing, it kind of ties in a little bit about what I just said about, you know, limiting your high energy activities is, you know what, sometimes, you know, people feel that they have to end every day with their dishes done, their laundry done, their counters clean, their floors vacuumed. I know I was one of them. I had four kids. I was working full time. I was going to school, getting my PhD full time. I was running a business. And so, you know, time was of the essence. However, what it did was it really made whatever sleep I got very unrest. So, you know what? Do your dishes, your chores earlier in the day. Wait until the next day. In turn, don't get into these high emotionally laden arguments with your kids because they didn't do their homework or they didn't get their clothes picked up or they didn't do whatever it was you needed them to do so that you end up going into your evening really emotionally drained because of, you know, you got to pick your battles, right? You got to pick your battles with the people you work with. You got to pick your battles with, <clears throat> excuse me, your kids. So, you know, figure out how you can do some of those things that might require a little more energy earlier in the day and learn to just set it aside until the next morning or a better time so that you don't find yourself so riled that going to sleep you can't because you're thinking about maybe some of the nasty things you said or how maybe you could have responded better to your, your teenager <clears throat> during one of those um, episodes that happens to all of us with our teenagers. Um, the fourth thing is if you are in bed and you find that you are not going to sleep after 10 minutes, don't keep laying there. You get up, get a book. Go back to your easy chair, try to read, do something to, and then later, maybe in 30 minutes, try it again. I have found that on YouTube, there are so many meditation um, videos, actually audios that I listen to and the soothing music or sometimes the guided meditation for sleep is good because it'll walk you through an exercise of um, calm breathing, maybe some progressive muscle relaxation to get you into that state of getting to sleep. So those are just a few tips that I shared on my professional Facebook page, Lori D. Young, LCSW PhD. But again, what you're watching right now is the Healing Homesteader. These are some how-tos that I have implemented in my life, not only as a professional, but as just a, a person struggling like the rest of us, everybody else, with daily stressors, um, challenges, 
And, you know, the purpose of the Healing Homesteader blog that I have on Facebook or these YouTube videos is to give some practical ideas of how to do things in your life that will be frugal, that will be simple, and that will bring you some joy and not break, break the bank at the same time. So what I'm going to teach you today is how to make an organic lavender pillow spray. Now, if you Google these or shop online or go places, you'll find that, you know, four ounces of this um, at a retail store could cost you anywhere from $25 to $30. And I found making this recipe that I'm going to show you today, I could make two ounces of an organic lavender essential oil pillow spray for about a dollar and a quarter, something like that, depending upon the products that you use. So let me tell you what you're going to need. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a spray bottle. I bought these little plastic spray bottles at Michael's uh, craft store for a dollar. They're two ounce bottles and the recipe I'm going to show you today makes four ounces. So, you know, you're going to need to make sure you have two of these or Re recycle a four ounce bottle that you have used before for maybe an essential spray, uh, pillow spray or air freshener that you had bought, you know, at a retail store. Recycle it. Don't throw the bottle away. Reuse it. Um, if you want glass spray bottles, I have found that you can buy them in bulk, a little cheaper than a dollar a bottle. But, you know, you may not want to buy 24 bottles. You might have a couple friends that want to do it together. But unless you're, you know, really going to be making these as gifts, you know, buy just a couple of them. You don't want to have bottles sitting around being unused because that's wasteful. The second thing, this recipe that I'm going to show you, you can use two things. One of two things. The first one is witch hazel. And this is T and Dickinson's witch hazel that I got at CVS. It regularly sells for about $7. I had a coupon and I cut it on sale. So I got it for a, about $3. And so there's uh, 16 ounces in this. And at the sale price, that brought that price down to about 20 some cents an ounce. Now, granted, if you're buying at full price at $7, which I don't encourage you to do, you know, use I, Ibotta, use coupons shop at sales, get your, you know, CVS uh, cash back um, that you can do. You can, you can really get some tremendous sales at CVS if you just watch it. Um, but this is 100% natural astringent. You can use witch hazel for a lot of things. Um, I'm actually going to make the recipe today with the witch hazel. Another option you can use is you can use vodka as a carrier. And so, you know, I like Svetka vodka. I got this for $18.99. Um, it's 1.75 liters. The reason I like vodka and, and use as a carrier is I can use it for multi-purposes. I can make vanilla extract with Madagascar vanilla beans. I can make mint extract. I can make a chocolate martini. I can't do that with witch hazel. You know, there's other things you can use witch hazel for, but I'm all about buying things that I can use for multiple purposes because in the end, that's a more frugal way of stretching my dollars for a number of simple joys that I can give to myself on a day-to-day -day basis. The third thing you're going to need is you're going to need um, lavender essential oil. I got organic, um, certified organic lavender therapeutic grade essential oil on e on Amazon through Mary Tyler Naturals. This uh, this was four ounces. Um, I paid fifteen ninety five. I figured out I don't know how I did it, but somehow I computed that every ounce of this is about six hundred drops. And so you only need about 10 to 20 drops. I tend to like a strong lavender uh, scent in my essential, in my pillow spray. So, you know, the recipe might call for 10. You can use 20 if you like it even stronger. You know, you got to do it to your own personal preference. But again, I got this on from Mary Tyler uh, Naturals on Amazon. Great product. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you, you need a little measuring cup for for, you know, that has an ounce to it. And I don't have any more spray bottles left, um, but I, so I'm gonna make this batch in a um, little mason jar. I'm a canner, so I always have canning jars. I love using glass. You know, I just make sure that whatever I use for products like this, I don't turn around and then can my applesauce in. So you gotta kind of be careful that you're not mixing and matching, you know, your food stuff with your, you know, your hygiene, your facial beauty products. So anyway, you're, what you're gonna do is you're going to measure, you know, you're gonna measure an, an ounce of witch hazel and 
then you're going to put the witch hazel in the jar. Now, before you add water, you need to put your essential oil in. And I'm going to put in about uh, 20 drops in here. Now, the reason you put the essential oil in with your carrier, the carrier will be your witch hazel or your vodka, is that if you would put the essential oil in straight water first, it's not going to dissolve. So what you've got to do is you've got to dissolve the essential oil in with the, your carrier. In this instance, it's the witch hazel. And then at that point, you're going to use um, three ounces of uh, filtered water. I use my Brita filter, so I'm just going to measure out, you know, three ounces one, two, three. And then I'm going to put the lid back on and then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to shake it up real good. And, you know, granted, I don't need a funnel because I'm using a, a mouth on this can that doesn't require a funnel. But when you're using your little spray bottles, which is, you know, this is what you're going to have to eventually do is you're going to need a little funnel. Otherwise, you're going to have a mess on your hands. So this recipe right here um, it came to. OK, so the witch hazel, I said, is about on sale, about 20 cents an ounce water. I don't even count that. The essential oil for 20 drops is about 13 cents based on what I pay. And then the little spray bottle was a dollar. So, you know, you, you need two of these spray bottles for this recipe. So per two ounce bottle, it's coming to about a dollar and a quarter. Now, when you're if you decide to make it with the vodka, um, it's going to be about 30 some cents a bottle so it's going to raise it up a little bit but either way your total cost is not going to probably exceed a dollar fifty um, for a two ounce spray bottle of organic lavender uh, pillow spray which is comparatively incredibly much cheaper um, on your pocketbook um, than going to the store and spending 25 or 30 dollars for it um, the reason I like Svetka Vodka, and I just want to do a little pump for them, I'm not being paid to do it, but the reason I like it is that they, um, I, when I was researching Svetka Vodka, they use a lot of their um, profits to support initiatives for responsible drinking. So even though this is a, a, a liquor, you know, they realize the importance of drinking and, dr and, and drinking responsibly and not driving um, while you are under the influence. So I appreciate that about them. Um, I love a good martini. I love a good mixed drink. I prefer to drink them at home just because of safety and being responsible. So that's why I purposely chose Svetka. There could be cheaper ones, especially if you go on Ibotta. You know, you can often find some cash backs through Ibotta on different kinds of vodka or uh, different alcohols. However, I decided that I wanted to make the purposeful choice to buy this one to support this company. Anyway, I hope that that is helpful for you. Um, again, you know, please visit my page on Facebook, The Healing Homesteader. I try to share a lot of uh, tips on things that can bring you some joy, bring you some savings to your pocketbook. Um, and you know, what I have found being a therapist, I feel like I'm a master therapist after 25 years, but I'm also a master dirt digger. You know, I have found that digging in my garden.